<laughs> Peace. <laughs> I am back in the um, rotunda of the Charles H. Wright Museum in Detroit, and I am trying to keep the recording going. I just left a presentation on the 1967 or 1966 um, student walkout and rebellion at Northern High School in Detroit, um, which was followed by the creation of a freedom school. So I just wanted to um, kind of share my reaction and quick notes from that event. The, I think the most important thing and the most striking thing to me um, is that someone asked the question, and this is toward the end, about what about our independent black freedom school movement in Detroit? Detroit, if I'm not mistaken, was a pioneer in the independent black freedom school movement with Aisha Shule in Saroma Institute, and there were other and might still be or might have still been other African-centered freedom schools in Detroit created by black people for black students that were culturally um, designed to support and serve us. And um, I think that, I don't know that any of them have, have survived. Um, and and I know that, that Insaroma and Aisha Shule aren't here um, anymore in that form. Um, and so it kinda, you know, I, I, I wanna know, you know, do we do an autopsy on what happened there um, and, um, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what the breakdown was, um, and, and, you know, sort of what other independent black freedom schools there are throughout the nation. Because as, you know, someone pointed out, as Malcolm X said, um, as Malcolm X said, um, you know, it's sort of foolish, um, this is not a direct quote, but it's sort of foolish to expect your enemy to educate you to survive and thrive and to defeat their evil meant. I mean, that's just sort of foolish. Um, sorry, I'm trying to multitask. Um. <laughs> so that was kind of the big takeaway from me. I am going to share some of my um, other notes from that event and I'll do the best I can. Okay, so um, Okay, I'll start with the things that I start. Um, one thing they said that that, free, that, that walkout um, showed was how a community with good leadership can resist um, oppression. Um, that was a, a point. Um, the resistance and protest that that walkout and freedom school represented not only resistance and protest, but it also represented visionary institution building. And that might be my language, but that was the concept. Um, and also, um, the second point that's hard to talk about is what white power does in the face of resistance, that there is repression and there's pushback, and we're still dealing with, and we continue to deal with that repression and um, pushback. Um, okay. Um, in 1990, there was a movement in Detroit where there was African-centered education as part of our curriculum. I sort of missed all of that, um, but that that, that that happened in 1990 was the flowering of the seeds that were planted in 1966. That was a very important note that sometimes, you know, I guess it just has me thinking, you know, about how when I worked with young people, a lot of times I had to realize that you work with young people and you might not see the result of your effort. You might not see the result of your love immediately. Sometimes you get a lot of resistance and pushback from young people and you still, you know, we still continue to love them. We still continue to serve them. We still continue to work on their behalf um, because we know that even if I don't see it, even if they never say thank you, um, to me that that's the right thing to do and I have had people come back to me years later or at the end of programs where they protested and complained the whole time and then when I did my exit interviews or my autopsy of the program they said miss why did you stop this miss why did you stop that because I was immature at that time and I didn't understand that as adolescents their job is to push back and as an adult <laughs> and a lover of them my job is to push forward with what I know is correct um, and you know of course it's a conversation um, so that was something um, Rambo said that he David Rambo was one of the speakers he said that he was surprised by the extensive supply of community volunteers there were over 60 seven or eight of them had PhDs there were resources galore that the students found and someone else added th these people came to the school once the freedom school was created people came out to support the way that a lot of those volunteers was found 
were found was by answering the phone because people were calling in to support, people were calling in to participate, people were calling in to be a part of it. Um, coalition, there was a coalition with other high schools. Um, the nor because of the Northern High School walkout, there was an increase in security in the other six or seven black schools in the cities. And so the other high school leaders got upset with Northern High School students. You're making our lives worse. We need to get together and talk to you. So when they got together and spoke with the students from Northern High School and the Northern High School students explained to them why they did the work walkout and what they were protesting and what they were working toward, then the other students were like, we're all here for that. Um, you know, we have the those same issues we have those same problems um, you know we're here for that um, so that broke the back of the power structure because those students were then like we'll all walk out if this doesn't work for you then we're all walking out and that was a threat to the power students Judy said you got to have courage it's a hard toll to pull um, she said that she got letters from the KKK um, her and her mom got death threats okay I'll see y'all in a moment her and her mom got death threats, and she said her mother had witnessed lynchings and castrations. And can I just tell you, I have heard of people's penises being cut off in lynching, but when she said castrations, that word hit me really hard. Lynchings and castrations, I don't really hear people use that language much, but that's, that's, that's what, it, what, what it really was. Um, unity, we all want unified struggle. We have to create unity out of division. And that coming together of the black, the students from all the black high schools was the creation of unity out of division. But you're not gonna create anything if you're not doing anything. You have to create something and see who shows up. Um, Eli Brofellow, I don't know what that is, but apparently the new superintendent of Detroit schools is an Eli Bro fellow, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, just as all the emergency managers of Detroit schools have been. Um, the system is not going to solve our educational or any problems, while media and white media is not going to send our message. We have to do it ourselves. Um, public schools, Wayne State University, Unity of, University of Michigan, whatever schools, have never been great for black students or black folks. Um, so that's what I got. The speakers were, or the people on the panel were Frank Joyce, David Rambo, a woman named Judy, Charles, Victor Gibson, and Carl Gregory. Most of the people were light-skinned men. There was very light-skinned. There was one man who was sort of brown-skinned, and then there was one woman who was darker-skinned. I just noticed that. Y'all know I noticed things like that. So those were kind of the main points. I still haven't gotten a chance to sit down and do um, blogging. I really need to get a media card for this thing. But just wanted to give you my immediate reaction. Action. Um, this is Angela. I'm at the Charles H. Wright Museum of um, African American History. Thank you for being here. Be you. Be fabulous. Be fabulous. You. Peace.